Yep. Okay, I call this meeting of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills Planning Board to order. It's Monday, April 8th, and it's 7.36 p.m. Um, adequate notice of this <coughs> excuse me, meeting has been given, <coughs> and it's being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10-4-6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act. I ask everyone to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'll open the meeting to the general public for anything that's not appearing on the agenda this evening. Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public portion. Please call the roll now. Mr. Perowick? Here. Councilman DiPiero? Here. Mr. Fergieri? Here. Ms. Hernandez? Here. Mr. Mendel? Here. Mr. Mealy? Here. Mr. Von Aiken? Here. Chairman Keller? Here. We also have with us our planner, Sue Favate? Here. Our board attorney, Scott Carlson? Here. Our board engineer, Andrew Cangiano? Here. Okay. The uh, first item on the agenda is to get a new class four member. Mr. Carlson? Stand and raise your right hand. Yes. I, Dominic Mealy. I, Dominic Mealy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. I do further, I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will impartially. And that I will impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of the office of. Perform all the duties of the office of. Planning board member class four. Planning Board Member Class 4. Township of Parsippany Troy Hills. Township of Parsippany Troy Hills. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome back, Mr. Thank you. Welcome back. <laughs> Sign that copy. Thank you all. Okay, the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes that were emailed to you. Someone care to make a motion? So move, Mandel. Is there a second? Second, Hernandez. Please call a roll. Mr. Perowick? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Mandel? Yes. Mr. Mealy? Yes. Chairman Keller? Yes. Okay. Nora, can you help me out with this next item? The contracts? Right, it's the approvals. Uh, for the board of professionals. Okay. These these are unchanged from They are unchanged. They're contracts that need to be signed. And can we vote on these as a package or should we do them separately? Uh, Scott? Um do any board members want any of these taken off of a consent agenda which we'll vote on all three at once? Seeing none, we can do all of them. Okay. Someone make a motion to approve the contracts for the board professionals which are uh, Susan Favate, Scott Carlson, and Andrew Congiano, the planner, attorney, and engineer, respectively. I'll make a motion. John Von Aiken. Second for Jerry. Sorry. Please call the roll. Mr. Perowick? Yes. Councilman DiPiero? Yes. Mr. Fergieri? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Mendel? Yes. Mr. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Von Aiken? Yes. Chairman Keller? Yes. Okay, you're contracted now. Now you have to work. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we do that for our teachers? All right, the, uh, <clears throat> the first uh, item on the agenda as far as applicants go is application number 18, colon 525. And I'm going to mess up this name. My apologies, Vivek Mat Matlar. Close enough? Yep. Okay. 96 Chesapeake Avenue. Block 593, lot 17 for minor subdivision with seat <coughs> variance. And here we go. I'll 
Okay, so I'm the applicant and owner of uh, the property at 96 Chesapeake Avenue in Lake Iota. So Please speak into the microphone. Good evening, everyone. I'm the owner and applicant for the property at 96 Chesapeake Avenue in Lake Hiawatha. And uh, if you can let me show you the... Sir, if you would. Um, <laughs> there's a few preliminaries. First of all, you're the owner applicant. I assume that you're not represented by counsel here tonight. No. Okay, and the property is owned by you as an individual and not not owned by a business entity? Yeah, it's owned by, by an individual, yes. By you, yes. you in your name? Yes. Okay. Um, you are going to explain this proposal to us now? Yes. Okay, so in, to the extent you're going to give testimony, I need to swear you in first. Okay. So if you'd raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony that you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Again, would you state and spell your name for the record, please? Vivek Machar. M -A, you spell your last name, please. Uh, M-A-C-H-C-H-H-A-R. Okay. You can begin. Okay, thank you. If you're going to go over the the there and take the microphone with you. Uh, wait, I'm going to find the... Uh, just pull the microphone out of there, out of the stand there. Yeah, it comes, it comes right out. There you go. Take a pen with you, too, because I'm going to ask you to mark the exhibits. I'll walk you through this as you, as we go, if you don't mind. Okay. So if you, do, you have a, do you have a pen with you? Yes. If you could write on that, mark that A1. Upper right. I'll just write right on, the, right, on, right on the plan in the upper right. Just write A1. And this is a uh, rendered tax map. Right. Okay. Please. Okay, so now um, my property is uh, 100 feet by 125 feet deep with a little jog on the right side. And uh, I'm proposing a uh, minor subdivision. And uh, as you can see, this lot is over 12,000 square feet. And I'm dividing in such a way that I'm maintaining the area of 6,000 square feet minimum of both the lots. So the only thing is. I'm having requesting variance is for the lot width, which will be <coughs> less than 60 feet. Because if you see in my neighborhood, all the all the lots, the, the highlighted, which is which in green, the green lots are all 50 feet wide by 125 feet deep. So I'm just requesting this variance of lot width, and in my case. I'm, I'm having a lot width of uh, which is less than 60 feet, but it's 125 feet deep, and I'm maintaining the area requirement of at least 6,000 square feet of both the lots. So this is the subdivision site plan, uh, the su uh, subdivision survey that was submitted with the plans. Right. Okay. Um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it anyway, just for clarity. If you just write A2 on that for me. Okay. Mr. Machar, my, my apologies. Do you have a copy of the report from our, our planner? Yes. BF, BFJ Planning? On yes. the first page, there's there's a list that are called waivers. Uh, we've got to cover those first. Okay. Uh, whether uh, just the lack of submission or that you had requested a waiver. So if we could go over those uh, individual, ask our planner to do that. And then we'll make a motion to either grant or deny the okay. waiver request. Okay. Right. Just real quick. You want to just take a minute. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. Um, so waivers were requested uh, on certification of taxes paid. We we defer to the tax assessor. We felt a waiver could be granted on that one. Uh, DEP letter of interpretation. Um, there are no wetlands on the property. It's, it's previously developed, uh, so we believe that could be waived. Similarly, for natural features, uh, location of streets. There are are no new streets proposed uh, and they gave gave the width of Chesapeake Avenue which is really the main street in question um, on to the next page again no proposed streets um, traffic study is not not required uh, given that this is just two single-family homes uh, no no requirement for an environmental assessment study uh, and again no natural features are on the site uh, so we recommend a waiver for that requirement okay would someone move to grant the waivers then so 
Well done. <laughs> no sense of comedy. Mr. Hernandez made a motion to grant the waivers. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Mealy. Please call the roll. Mr. Perowick? Yes. Councilman D. Piero? Yes. Mr. Frigieri? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Mandel? Yes. Mr. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Von Aiken? Yes. Chairman Keller? Yes. Okay. Now you can proceed. Okay. So now, uh, the only thing is uh, I'm laying out the, the house layout. It's, uh, it's two-story house plans, house designs, and I'm I'm il below 20% ground coverage on both the lots, and uh, I have enough setbacks on the sides. It's uh, 11 feet and 12 feet. Uh, I mean, 11 feet on this lot and 12 feet on this lot. So I mean, I have an engineer of record, Mr. Daniel. You can explain more. Of, uh, with the site conditions and uh, site planning, if you have any questions for the engineer. Oh, do you want do you have something you want to add? Um, do you want me to be sworn in? I would. Okay. If you have something you want to add. Um, yes, <laughs> <I wish. laughs> so if you raise your, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, I do. Would you state and spell your name for the record, please? My name is Daniel Davies. So the name is D-A-V-I-E-S, and I'm a licensed engineer in the state of New Jersey. Would you give the board the benefit of your qualifications and experience, please? Uh, yes, um, I've had about 20 years of design experience in the state of New Jersey, of which uh, eight of those have been as a professional engineer. Uh, this is my first time before this particular board. I have uh, uh, developed plans primarily in um, Sussex and Warren counties with hotel designs in Camden and North Bergen. Anyone have any questions on this qualification? Proceed, Mr. Davis. Thank you. Um, I am the engineer of record of the plans. Um, just to help the board a little bit, um, and the initial submission did not have signed sealed documents that were produced by a licensed civil engineer. And that was one of the comments that the board of professionals had that we should assist in the preparation of those. We did submit these three plans, which are part of the application package that you have before you. The first is a, a cover sheet showing a breakdown of the zoning criteria. <coughs> it does go into all the bulk requirements that we do satisfy, base setbacks, lot coverage, and the only uh, condition that we do not comply with is the lot width. And that is uh, something that the applicant owner would uh, like to discuss further. We do not have a um, uh, professional planner with us this evening or an attorney, um, the applicant is representing himself. Mr. Davis, is anything that you're showing us there not in our packets? Uh, no, everything that I'm showing you tonight you have in your package. I'm okay. just going through uh, explaining the project a, a little bit uh, more clearly from an engineering standpoint that will hopefully address any concerns that the professionals had in their comment letters. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Davis, I don't want to interrupt your flow here, but if you could go back to the front, the, the front page for a moment. I'd Note that that was marked preliminary and final site plan. There is no site plan approval being sought tonight, correct? No, it's the subdivision, but <coughs> we're demonstrating with this how the site could be laid out and could be de developed for plot plans later. Would you object to revising the plans to show that this is just simply a minor subdivision plan? And Absolutely not. Site that plan reference. Thank you. So the existing conditions uh, today, <coughs> it is a, uh, a larger lot in the neighborhood. There's a single story residents on it with a driveway um, that is proposed to be demolished all existing site improvements to be removed and then that would result in the subdivision that you do see which is on page three which is effectively splitting the lot into two single family residences as has been indicated all bulk requirements would be satisfied except for the lot width the drainage pattern today splits approximately 50 50 to the rear and to the front that drainage pattern would be maintained under the proposed conditions. With the addition of having some seepage pits in the rear of the property to collect uh, rooftop runoff, effectively reducing stormwater runoff for the entire two properties. <coughs> there is a 40 inch diameter oak tree in the front yard of the left hand property, which is on proposed lot 17.02. That will be maintained. The, there are two brand new driveways, two Chesapeake, on 17.02, there was a concern about a conflict with an inlet. That was a type B graded inlet that fits into the curb. 
that would be removed and a flat great inlet would be put in. Um, one, one second. Mr. Chairman, I need some clarity. Is this for a site plan or for a division? Because I feel like I'm hearing testimony for a site plan. I think he, he's just he's using that to demonstrate what it would look like. He's just here tonight for the subdivision. All right, but none of <coughs> this has correct? to do with any of the approvals no. that we're going through. So this is no. colorful, no. but not instructive. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Davies, but you're just demonstrating what would could be be built there and meeting the requirements except exactly. for the lot it, it, width. But you could do anything else you wanted with future site approval. Uh, if the minor fit subdivision was approved, you could put something totally different if it fit the bulk requirements or coming back for alternate variances. Yes. Okay. <coughs> we're I just, just want to make sure that was clear. No, just demonstrating this evening what the applicant would like to do and hopefully answer some of the questions from the professionals' comment letters to enable uh, the applicant to proceed with a, a minor subdivision. Okay. Um, so the development of the plan just shows how the sites could be developed and how the drainage would be addressed, um, what kind of landscaping at this moment, there is no proposed landscaping, that would be up to the individual homeowners. Um, the shade trees on the, on the street today, there's, it's, there's some but not others, like 50% of the street is covered. So this plan was developed just to aid in the, the showing that yeah. the minor subdivision can be approved, it can be developed and it can meet the bulk requirements and the conditions of the professional comment. And with that, I'll hand it back to the applicant. Okay, do any board members have any questions for Mr. Davies? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Now, with this, um, if it's approved down the line, will they uh, be attached, these uh, dwellings? No, these are um, single. They will be that. singles? They're not multi -tanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members have any questions? I, again, I, I'm not sure if this is the right time to discuss it, but I drove by there, and that tree is, is quite large that we want to see remain. And demolishing the current home and digging new foundations, would that not put that tree in danger? Where the, um, the setback is proposed, we have a very deep lot, so we have the ability to push by demonstration of this particular plan, we can show that we can position the houses back far enough to protect that tree. Mm -hmm. And that is, is paramount in this, this application, is to protect the tree. At no time was there any um, request to remove the tree. Is, is it fair to say that the depth of the lot could also be used to increase the size of those properties? Or the proposed site, or proposed uh, plans the, for the homes? The residences? Yes. Quite possibly, yes. Okay. Any other board members? Do any members of the public have any questions? Questions on the testimony given by Mr. Davies? Or by Mr. Machar. Or, yes. I guess we'll open it. Right, my apologies for not, uh, not opening fire. <laughs> Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public portion. Mr. Machar, you may continue. Yeah, so I'm uh, just requesting uh, the variance for if you see in my neighborhood, uh, majority of the lots are 50 feet wide by 125 feet deep. So I'm requesting the C variance for my lot because it will be because I'm not, I'm not confirming at least 60 feet front frontage for both the lots. Uh, so, and this lot is only like 40 feet wide by 100 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I'm requesting uh, sea variance approval. Thank you. Can you tell me how many 40 and 50 foot? Lots, substandard lots, there are within 200 feet of your property. Feet of you pointed out one there. Yeah, yeah this one is only one. this one is only one, which is 40 feet okay. by 100 feet. And are there any uh, other 40 or 50 foot lots within 200 feet? Yeah, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are all substandard lots. All the green ones. Yeah, all the green, green ones, ones are 50, uh, 50 feet. And how many? How many are there? They are. Uh, 
16 slots. Yeah, 16 lots are uh, 50 feet by 125 feet. If I could ask, uh, are all those lots that are 50 feet wide, they have one residence in them? Yes, one residence, yeah, okay. single family. Uh, and, how, and what you're proposing is two on 60? Did I get that right? Am yeah. I doing no. the math right? Uh, 100, I think. Oh, it's 100. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah 100 by 125 feet. Okay. Proposing 50. Okay. Yeah. And all the green ones are 50. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, my comment for you is, is uh, I, I think your the plans that are proposed are very reasonable. Um, my concern is these plans don't necessarily represent what you could do with the property right. and the character of that neighborhood. And so currently the way that the lot is laid out creates certain restrictions for what you can do with it. Cutting that lot in half now opens you up to more opportunities which could change, which could make your properties now different from the rest of the properties in the neighborhood and create some challenges there, or at least challenges that your, your neighbors might object to but right. changes that you would be fully within your right to do. So we couldn't object to them. Right. So that's where my heart, that's where my challenge is. Because if we do allow for you to s divide this property, now all of a sudden you have freedom to do things which we might otherwise uh, not want you to right. do. Yeah, I mean, the proposed design set I did was, I mean, if you have the plans, it's uh, pretty, uh, I I would stick to those designs and uh, Mr. Bashar, are, are you an architect? I'm I'm I have a bachelor's in architecture. Okay. I'm I'm in the process of getting Give my license. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you, you would still have to maintain all the bulk variances. Yeah, I, I would maintain unless, twenty yeah. twenty percent maximum coverage. Unless he yeah. went to the zoning board and. Got Experiences. Right. For side, you know, setbacks. Or yeah, I have enough. I have like 12 feet of side setbacks instead of Coverage. 6 feet. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I have plenty of space on the sides for the neighboring house. So. Yeah, I, I think the plans that are here are, are exactly what we would want to see. The problem is I can't hold you to them. That's um, unless that's, that's the case in every subdivision yeah. application, though. This is, you know. It's, uh, you know, on the, on the way to lot as exists, though, you could get, you know, what, what's commonly a McMansion mm -hmm. on this size lot. So mm -hmm. um, what, you, what, you'll, what you're going to get is two smaller houses. And, it's, you know, does, does the subdivision in your mind then um, create, create two building lots that are more in keeping with the character of the neighborhood? Or is the one large building lot that he would have as is in <laughs> keeping with the neighborhood? There's a similar size lot in Lake Parsippany. Mm -hmm. Existing on it right now, it's four years old, is a 3,900-square-foot home with a three-car garage and five bedrooms. Mm. That's what could be built there yeah. tomorrow. So my, my observation, if I may, is, is that in communities like this, you're seeing more and more the subdivision encouraged to avoid the McMansion situation and tightening of bulk regulations to make sure that uh, the, you know, the, the development on the on the substandard lots, mm -hmm. as it would be here, is, 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 is in keeping with yeah. the neighborhood. On the, on the other hand, mm -hmm. when the township established a master plan, its intent in zoning that property to have a 60-foot frontage is not to further increase the density mm -hmm. of the most densely populated area in mm -hmm. the township. And most of those in green were probably subdivided the same way and I've always objected to subdividing a conforming lot into two non-conforming lots, which is probably what all those green ones are. And there's a couple more that we're going to see in the future. We're, we're, we're increasing the density in the most densely populated area of the township, and I've always objected to that. If, if, if this is the case, and, and, and past boards and present and future boards are going to keep granting the variances for this, then maybe we should change the master plan and let them uh, increase the density there and not have them come here every time. Is there any chance that some of those substandard lots that predate 
the 60 foot. The, the 40 foot one certainly predates the master plan. Yeah. All of the 40 foot lots in the town. But you're right on the 50s though. Some of the 50s predate, yes. Yeah. You know, when I pass by the house, I'm guessing that house was built in the 30s or the 40s when that was a lake community yes. for real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so getting rid of that house and putting up two new ones would definitely in improve the uh, the visibility of the neighborhood. The the, I, the the current house is an eyesore. Yeah. Oh. But uh, you know, from that standpoint, you know, we're, we're putting in something that is definitely more modern. But you're right, uh, Councilman. We're going to increase the uh, density. I mean, uh, I didn't. What are we talking about? Four bedroom homes? Four yeah, three bedroom. Three. three bedroom. Three, four bedroom, yeah. If you look at them, if you look at them one at a time and say, well, what's the I harm? Know. You're right. But they add up. I mean, even uh, the old text map had this lots as 50 feet by 125 feet. Uh, and now it is, I'm just going back to the old version of it. Do you have that to present? I mean, I, I saw the old text map, uh, and it was it was actually there was a line in between, mm -hmm. and and then maybe it was revised. Uh, but I don't have that old text map. Are there any other hundred foot lots in your area? There? There's one right there. There's hundred foot. Uh, there is ninety five feet here. There's one in his street, just mm -hmm. foot, just past the green one. That looks like hundred. This is yeah. This is the Still corner lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one here, 100 feet. Yeah. 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 25, 24, yeah. Yeah. 23, 24. Mm -hmm. Corner one. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, just uh, just to um, you know, sort of make clear if it's not already to the board, you know, what's really before them and looking at the C variance is he could either make the case that it's a physical features variance or the hardship, which is the C1. I don't think there's there's a case for that here. Um, so the other one is the public benefits test, and it's really, is it consistent, is it furthering the goals of the, the municipal land use law, and do the benefits outweigh the detriments? And I think you've heard sort of both sides, and that's really the, the question before you mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, and, then, and then sort of the negative uh, criteria of, of the variance uh, statute is that um, he has to demonstrate that the variance can be granted without substantial detriment. So those are really the mm -hmm. questions before you. Do the benefits outweigh the detriments, and, and can it be granted without... Uh, impairing the public good. Most of that testimony has come from board members, though. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> do you have a Do you have a planner with you? No, he doesn't have a professional. Uh, no, I don't have, a, don't have a professional planner. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, because this this lot uh, is for my like uh, own use because I I recently got married and I, I my parents now want to live on the house next to us and I want to live on this house. So mm -hmm. It's you don't want your in-laws living <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll reject it just to help you out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, that's, can, that's can, you, can you testify to some of the things that Ms. Vivade, our, our planner, brought up as far as the uh, requirements to, to grant a variant? Yeah, because what, one of the requirements is, is it has to have a public benefit and not just a private benefit. So clearly a subdivision benefits the property owner and that it unlocks more value uh, of the property. But there also needs to be a public benefit. So if you could speak to what you see as the public yeah. benefit. I mean, I, all, there is definitely a benefit because the population in, I mean, people are moving more in Lake Hiawatha. And in just in case if I, if somebody is interested or mm -hmm. provides opportunities for people to, I mean, uh, move in here and there is, there is more space here. Would, so would you gr agree that you'd be improving the value of the property, which would also increase the tax value of the property? I mean, I, I will do landscape, I will do, I mean, I will do modern homes. Okay. I would, have, of course, uh, if, I, if I have something people see, like a modern home, it might increase the value in the future. So, yeah, that's uh, something, yeah, I can, I can definitely work on it. Mm -hmm. Could you clarify again, I know we're not uh, voting on the structures themselves this evening, but uh, I counted four bedrooms when, when I include the master bedroom. Yes. And is that an accurate count? Yeah, it's a four, yeah. So it's four, just to be clear. I, 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 some people thought it was three. 
So I just no, this this yeah, this is four bedroom. Yes, this, okay. this side of the lot is four bedroom. Yeah, but but the design is you see is very minimalistic. It's uh, right. It's no, simple I see. And mm -hmm. just, uh, it's not. Uh, I think I'm. I'm not like wasting space around. It's, uh, Mr. Machar, I'm I'm going to make a recommendation to you, and that is that you come back with either an attorney and or a planner to testify to this. I think you should have gotten a sense that some people like the idea, some people really question it. Um, and I wouldn't want your application to be approved or disapproved without you having an opportunity to make adequate testimony. Right. Um, the choice is entirely up to you, but I think you may benefit if you have professional representation. It's, it's highly unusual to not have an attorney before the planning board. You can do that before the zoning board, but typically uh, before the planning board, there's at least an attorney represented. And, and as our planner indicated to you, there's tests that should be met for the C variances that you're applying for. And uh, your planner can better testify to that than, than you can as as a civilian, as a non-professional. Yeah. I mean, I talked to the planner. I mean, uh, and uh, he he was suggesting also like, it's it, do you have an option to present yourself? Uh, you you do you do, Mr. Machar. Um, yeah. The the fear here, and I, I don't want to speak for the board members, but I sense that the record here is a little thin with regard to what are known as the planning proofs that justify the grant of the C variance. Right. Um, it's important to understand that when the board is considering a variance, use variance or a C variance, whatever it may be, it's not simply do they think it's a good idea or do they think it's a bad idea. Uh, the statute walks through a number of statutory criteria that need to be proven just like in court um, in, in the minds of the board members to justify their saying yes, I'm in favor of this application. And I'm not saying that you don't have that here. What I'm saying is that I think that the testimony here is a little thin with regard to that. And that if you did have a planner um, to testify as an expert, that person hopefully could provide testimony um, sh de demonstrating that there is a public good to all to, to, to the uh, to the application. It's not just you know, the, the fact that it's it's beneficial to you and your family. Well, of course, you know the, the the board would love to do something beneficial for you and your family. They're not authorized to do it on that basis. Right. See, I, we we might look at a plan and say, you know, I like it or I don't like it. Uh, but we can't vote on that basis. You have to meet the criteria, the laws that are in place, uh, meet the tests, as, as Mr. Carlson indicated. Um, let, let me check with, with our clerk. and uh, Nora, how soon could we get Mr. Machar on to come back with professionals? Um, we can get him back in here May 20th. May 20th? Yes. We could we could bring you back on May twentieth. Right. That should give you plenty of plenty of time to get a, right. an attorney and a planner to to represent you properly. And so I, I, I wouldn't want. I have no idea how the vote would go <laughs> if it was taken right now. Right. But I wouldn't want to give you short shrift on on your application. The other thing is you only get one bite at this apple. So if the board were to vote no tonight, it's not as though you could then come back with a planner and okay. put on more because right. once the, once it's a no vote, that's permanent. Oh, on that okay. application so right, before right. there's a vote i'd prefer to see you have the opportunity to make a full record right right but the choice is yours of course <laughs> if you want to vote tonight you are entitled to that uh yeah i mean So I, I would, I would, uh, we can carry on on May. May twentieth. You'd rather be here on May twentieth. Yes, we can. I can okay. get a professional planner involved. So I think that's a good decision. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Thank you. And, and, and Mr. Carlson, that'll be without notice, correct? Yeah. 
application for any members of the public that are here. This is going to be carried to our May 20th meeting. It will be without further notice, so you will not receive notice of that meeting. This is the only notice you'll receive. Thank you, you, very you don't have to send letters out again. Right. No, thank you. Um, okay. I'm sure Mr. Davies can guide you through the world of uh, land use uh, practitioners <laughs> and hopefully <laughs> find the right professionals. Right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. See you on May 20th then. Oh, sir, before we close, um, do you consent to extend the board's time to act on this application until that May 20th meeting? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just one last point. Um, I'm relatively new on, on the board, but I'm sort of learning the ways of things a little bit. And normally when there's a planner who's going to testify or uh, particularly a planner, they submit some, some things in writing to support their testimony, right. which goes to what Mr. Carlson was, was pointing out about right. the thinness of the argument. And the, the planner said, yes, indeed, that is yeah. normally the case for right. all of us to chew on, particularly her. Right. right. So in advance of the May 20th meeting. Yeah, thank you. If we can get that written yeah, material. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Yep. Okay. Good field park. Good luck, sir. Okay. You should keep all this stuff. Okay. I don't think anyone's here for that one. Um, would you like me to take this one? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the next item on the agenda is... Um, a little bit of a, a pro forma kind of thing. Um, do you want me to introduce this? Do you want to introduce Scott? And, and you can jump <laughs> in, then you can take lead on the next one. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, in the, control. Don't worry. About no, this this, yeah. this this one sort of originated. This one sort of originated um, on my computer or on my phone, I should say, uh, getting a frantic call from our grant writer, the township's grant writer, um, saying that uh, they have the opportunity to apply for a grant for to install a cricket field at Smith Field. Um, and they need, as part of the grant criteria, they need a letter from the planning board saying that the planning board believes this to be consistent with the master plan. Easy enough, except they needed it for 9 a.m. the next day. <laughs> and there were obviously no planning board meetings between my phone call and 9 a.m. the next day. So um, we came up with something that we believe will satisfy the, the grant planners, uh, the, the, grant, uh, the, the, the grant agency. Um, and that is we, we crafted a letter, which I believe should be in your packet, um, from the chairman, or I'm sorry, well, signed by the chairman, but, but from the board plan are explaining that the, the, the proposal is in fact consistent with the master plan and that this same letter will be considered at this meeting for ratification. And here we are. So I'll that was, um, that was a quick hour and a half of <laughs> <laughs> so of my time, but, um, uh, I mean, the good news is that I think it was kind of a no brainer in terms of master plan consistency. Um, it, the, the, Grant application for a cricket facility at Smithfield Park is clearly consistent with the, with the broad and general goals of the master plan um, regarding public health, safety, morals, and general welfare, light, air, and open space, appropriate and efficient expenditure of public funds, and also um, providing for a variety of uses in open space. Um, and then what's also interesting is that when you look at the township's 2011 open space and recreation plan, which is considered an element of the master plan, it specifically calls out cricket. Uh, as a type of recreation that is uh, needed by the township and should be pursued. Um, so that was really kind of an icing on the cake uh, in terms of master plan consistency. So we, we wrote this letter uh, on Chairman Keller's behalf, um, but I think the, the intent is that tonight we would memorialize that uh, in a, a resolution by the planning board, um, that, that the grant application uh, is, is consistent with the master plan. Do, do you know where at Smithfield they're planning on going this cricket field? I do not know the specifics uh, uh, where it says south of Route 80. Yeah, that's where you said thought, Bob, at the end of that road. That I was guessing there because yeah, that's the newest field and that's, yeah. that's turf, I think. That's not grass. Yeah, this would be artificial as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I thought it said south of Route 80. That would be yeah. on the other. Yeah. It that's does not, say south. Oh, that's that's right. It's also. That's not contiguous with. Uh, uh, the existing Smith Field. Right. Yeah. It can't it's be. Smithfield south. Not if it's south of Route 80. Well, south, south of Route 80 is. There's a soccer field to the left on South Beverly Road. Right. I can't think of any. Wouldn't they say Smith Field? It's Smith Field it's south. Smithfield it doesn't south. Say south of Route 80. 
Yes, it does. It, does. Yes. Yes. it, does. it, it says it's immediately it. south of I-80. Yeah. Yes. But Smithfield doesn't exist south of Correct. Right. So that's yeah. got oh, wait. He will yeah. soon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so th this map. is a section of... This is a big this, grant. <laughs> yeah, this must be a section, uh, and this is actually how I had heard through rumors that this exists, um, as it says here, to the south of 80, so not part of Smithfield. I, I've got to assume that's a typo, that they meant the south I think they meant from 46. I, I, I don't believe so. I, I, there is space uh, between the housing. There, there is no um, more space uh, but that's con not contiguous Smith to Smith Field. We built a field which we called at the end of Grange Road, mm -hmm. which uh, we called Smith a cricket, cricket and multi-purpose field. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, those that play cricket say that field is not adequate for a real cricket field. Uh, it, it requires at least triple or quadruple the, the, the acreage of the field we built at the end of Grange, Grange Road. So they wanted their own. And so, yeah, if you go to, uh, so the only to your Google Maps, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, on, the, only, the only field I can think of is right across from District 5 Firehouse on yeah. South Bevick Road. The, that's where they play now. That field is not level. It would have to be no, level. It's an it's a ankle breaker. Yeah, it is. Right now, it, it mm -hmm. is. But that's the only area I can think of south of Route 80. What is this here, Councilman? Yeah, that's, that's where it's just... Yeah. That's nowhere near it. That's, you know... No, if you pull up your Google map, and, and, and Scott's showing the Councilman now, there's an area that's identified as South Beverwick um, I'll just Park, say South Beverwick, yeah. which is off of Barber Street, well, that, which yeah, is a residential that neighborhood. From, from Barber Street, and that goes right up to Route 80, I don't think that that's... I don't know what that is. I believe that's that the area that's, that's being that's referred a, to. That is a wooded area right now I'm looking. that's not used. But it, it butts right up against all the houses on Barber Street. That's correct. It appears that this is a typo because it should have probably said immediately north of yeah. I-80. That's what I along think. Along Route 46 yeah. East. There Mr. Chairman, I'm looking in the, in the email from that I got from the grant officer, and I will try to confirm that. All right. And there is a block and lot identified here, so we could confirm whether or not that is, that is Smith Field. Well, regardless of where it is, what is our purpose tonight? The purpose of tonight is only to determine whether or not a, a cricket field located at Smith Field is consistent with our master plan. I'm not sure that its location at Smith Field is necess necessarily changes anybody's mind on that. I don't think so. Does right. it matter if the entrance to that field goes through a residential area? No, because we're not looking at the okay. application time. Okay. We're just considering master plan. Is this right. consistent? Okay. Right. So the track you just looked at is landlocked, by the way, unless you go through somebody's property. Parachute. Yeah, I, I, if I had to guess, I would assume it's uh, probably a typo, but I'm trying to confirm that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, if, if one were to be built adjacent to residence, there might be a fuss, because I understand. I'm, I know nothing about cricket, but I understand the games can go on for a long time. <laughs> there, there's a more current form of the game which is is much more in line with other sports that we have in the area but yeah they could always go traditional on us no, the, the other the other the other folks Ground i talked to the, the friends i have said they can go on all weekend <laughs> it, it, it can in a traditional game but there's a modern form of the game which takes about two hours i wish they would do that to baseball <laughs> I'll tell you what, I mean, we can, I, um, per, I would think that we can vote on this, unless any of the board members have an objection, that you can vote on master plan consistency without an issue. And if there's a typo in the letter, that can be addressed administratively yeah. after this meeting. But the only issue I might see is, is what happens if they, they do have to plow trees over in order to do, I mean, does that then make it a different uh, impact on the master plan? That I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Well, right. we're not doing the site plan, right? I suppose it could, but what they yeah. were asking is, is cricket consistent with? Oh, well, that's easy. Plan. And that's, yeah. yeah. What that's, about this? Susan well, said this that's is kind of a no-brainer. This is being implemented by our, our township parks and forestry department. So, uh, yeah, parks and forestry is not going to. He keeps that. us. He keeps us uh, designated as Tree City. So, yeah. If he knocks one down, he's going to put one back. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. It's the Green Acres program. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. That 
it's apparently with the green if this property is encumbered with green acres funds if it's, it's not consistent with the master plan then it's a diversion from green it. acres which yeah. is not allowed so right. i think this is the first step for them to find out is this consistent with their green acres grant and and, okay. and, and requirements that it's still uh park use uh consistent right. with the master plan I, I mean all these questions make sense I think as they move forward with site plan, is does it need a new road? Is it, where is right, it located? Right. But when I see your green acres, uh, mm -hmm. this is the the, the, the uh, to make sure that they, they're consistent with, with the green acres requirements on the property. That's Good. really what they're trying to find. Right. The grant we're requesting at this point. Is green acres money. Correct. So, and yes. if there's if the grant is successful and they they are going to be doing a park, then they'll come here for a courtesy review. Get to look at those issues. Mm -hmm. My guess is that it's already encumbered with green acres. I'm just guessing, and yeah. they have to make sure they comply with the requirements of that green acre uh, oh, funding okay. that they got. Right. And they had uh, to get a similar letter from yeah, right. County yeah. And it's Planning a huge. Well. It's a state house commission requirement, uh, at, at, and uh, uh, at the state level to try and get something done on a piece of property that's green acres funded. That's not approved. Uh, for that use that's not on the master plan that wasn't addressed in, in when they had envisioned the green acre so this I think that's what the purpose of this is at this stage okay we're, that's we're, we're belaboring this now yeah. the, the, the letters the letter has been sent mm -hmm. and all we have to do is say yes we agree with that or no we don't so it's I don't know what you would do if you all wanted to say no, but if someone <laughs> would make a motion approving this I'll make a motion but I still would like to see where it's going and we will. Um, yeah. we sort of one, the just tomorrow. one sec. I, I have a question on the synthetic field. Is there anything in the master plan that, that speaks we're not, to that? We're not going there right now. Let's okay. Uh, this yeah, I don't recall there being anything specific in the master plan or the open space element about synthetic turf versus natural. Okay. It, okay. Is there a second to Mr. DiPiero's motion? For Jerry, second. Please call the roll. Mr. Perilic? Yes. Councilman DiPiero? Yes. Mr. Fergieri? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Mendel? Yes. Mr. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Von Aiken? Yes. Chairman Keller? Yes. Okay. Now, which one of you is going to take the next one? <laughs> Scott, do you want me to get started? Please. You know, you know, this one you know a lot more about than I do. Uh, I hope so. Um, so this is the uh, 1515 um, Route 10, the Stanberry development. Um, I, I know that I think everybody on the board is familiar with the development, familiar with the property. Um, they've been here before you a couple times. Um, what's before you tonight is uh, a referral from the Township Council on a land annexation petition. Uh, and just while they're getting set up, I'll give you the intro. Um, this is not something we see a lot of here in New Jersey, annexation. But when it happens, the statute requires that the governing body um, make a referral to the planning board for a report on, quote, the impact to the municipality, end quote, period. There are no, uh, there are no standards. There's no guidance as to what that actually means. So um, we have it <laughs> to, to make that report uh, the, from the planning board. And you have a memo, I think it's uh, on your, in your package before us, uh, kind of going through um, what we think the impact, or in this case, no impact, will be. Uh, but I think maybe they should uh, sure. get their presentation. Sure. Council, if you'd enter your appearance, please. Good evening. Everyone can hear me, I hope. Yep. Um, so I'm Kate Coffey from Day Pitney, just down the road. And I'm here tonight on behalf of 1515 Parsippany LLC. And with me is Max Dorn, who's a representative of the applicant. Uh, 1515 LLC is the owner of um, property, well, they're owner of a contiguous property, some located currently in Parsippany and some located currently in Hanover. And I'm just gonna, I'm somewhat questioning the structural integrity of my easel. So if it collapses, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so what they, so th these are all parcels that are currently owned by 1515. So they own block 200, lot 102, which is in Parsippany. And they also own block 303, lots 13 and 14, which are in Hanover. Um, the property currently is a vacant office building which fronts on Route 10 next to the Delta Dental site, which I'm sure you all know from driving up and down like I do. Um, <coughs> all three of these parcels are subject to redevelopment plans. So lot 102 is subject to a redevelopment plan that's already been uh, reviewed and approved in Parsippany, including by this board. Um, and block 303, lots 13 and 14 in Hanover are currently subject to a redevelopment plan that's been reviewed and approved by Hanover. 
All parcels are also subject to redevelopment agreements which have been um, executed with their respective municipalities. All of those documents contemplate um, the annexation that we're here to talk about tonight. And so as you can see right now we have the existing lot configuration of block 14 goes like this if you can follow the, the pink line up. And as a result, the border of Parsippany and Hanover cuts this triangular shape across the property. And so what both of the redevelopment plans had contemplated was a mutual annexation of land between Hanover and Parsippany. Essentially, they'd be swapping triangles um, so as to create a more regularly sized lot on both sides of the municipal lot line, which is thought to better facilitate redevelopment of both parcels. So what's being proposed? is that a portion of existing block 303, lot 14 in Hanover, which measures approximately 2.0499 acres, would be annexed into Parsippany, and that at the same time, a triangular portion of existing block 200, lot 102, which is currently in Parsippany, be annexed to Hanover, and that measures approximately 0 0.9504 acres. And as a result, we would have two rectangular shaped properties, one following this red line, which would be in Hanover, and then this large rectangle here, which is follows the black, and then it turns pink, and it goes pink across here and back up to black, would be the Parsippany parcel. Um, as I said, it's consistent with both, re both towns' redevelopment plans, both redevelopment agreements, um, the applicant would submit that we think that it's important to facilitate the redevelopment that's been contemplated um, by those redevelopment plans because it's going to allow us to have a regular shaped parcel, it's going to allow us to have a more cohesive development on both properties, um, it's going to be more conducive for financing, circulation, etc. Um, happy to answer any questions if anyone has them. Uh, just an observation. Yes, sir. The only disadvantage I see to Parsippany is Hanover gets the hotel and we get the apartments. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to address that? I don't know if there is an answer to that. It's already, <laughs> it's a done deal. It, so you're correct. That's what the redevelopment plans that have already been adopted contemplate. I was not at the table for those discussions. Um, Neither was I. <laughs> what, I what I will say is Parsippany at the end gets more land um, and the way that it's currently driven, Parsippany also has greater control over particularly, for example, this access that, spur that spans between the two properties. So from a planning perspective, um, it does give Parsippany um, a lot more control over the overall redevelopment of the, of the project. Right, but in terms of the development that is proposed and is, as approved, it has no impact whatsoever on, on what is built. What is built will be built regardless of where the line is. I, I think from a planning perspective, it makes it um, just logistically simpler. You don't have municipal lines running through a building. Um, which would have been challenging, to say the least, um, to figure out which town gets which portion of the taxes and who has to, who has to pay for the garbage. Well, no, actually, Parsippany's not paying for the garbage, but who has to deal with public safety, things like that. Um, so this essentially just squares it off. I was just making an observation. I, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an accurate observation. But and, and thank you, Ms. Vivate, for your point, which is if, if we don't accomplish the annexation and the, and the project it continues to be developed as contemplated by the redevelopment plans, we would have a building in both towns and a, a parking lot in one town servicing a building in a different town, um, which as you say leads to all kinds of questions about how properties should be assessed, who's going to govern them, um, et cetera. So, right, yeah. right. so, I mean, so from our perspective, the main, the main impact, if you're looking at potential impacts, was potentially one of a minor positive fiscal impact for the township because you get a little bit more land. Um, and I don't, I don't know what the quantified um, positive impact is, but it's probably pretty de minimis because uh, it's about an acre. Um, but otherwise, there really isn't any impact. So you know, we suggested that basically the planning board's role is, is to sort of verify that and then also to, again, verify master plan consistency. You've already done that um, before. Uh, when you looked at the original redevelopment plan and then you looked at it again back in November, uh, for they came in for an amendment and you determined that it was consistent at that point. So given that, that nothing really has changed on the ground, uh, you, could, you could simply reaffirm <coughs> master plan consistency and, um, and affirm that, that you know, there, is, there is no negative impact uh, on the township and potentially a small positive impact. Well, as, as a firefighter in town, 
and our dispatching being done by the county, I can tell you it would be a nightmare. Where'd that 911 call come mm -hmm. from? Mm. Oh, the fire is now spread to the next town. Call this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I can tell you that that conversation <laughs> actually happened several months ago. <laughs> that, that's exactly yeah. the, the sorts of issues we're trying to sidestep if we can. Does anybody know how the triangles came about? The, the existing? Yeah. It's, it's a funky part of Harsopini. That's that, that how I would triangle respond south to. Of, uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I think the lots have been in, in that configuration that for a, a no long. Come up with an answer. Why, why do we own anything on the other side of our town? Oh yes. There's eight or ten houses mm -hmm. that are Parsippany down Johnson Road there. Mm -hmm. We've got to go over there and pick up garbage. I, I think they they get their water though from uh, was it American? They get it to southeast. Over there, yeah. yeah. Well, that was going to be my question: How do the utilities be serviced and uh, and the road access is, is Parsippany? So we have to maintain that road. No, no the, the road is a is a private there. road. Oh, so okay. This road is a, is a private road, but for example, uh, when it's getting built, someone has to come out yeah. and inspect it, and all, right. uh, all that that would be done via Parsippany rather than Hanover. Right. What is that Dyer Road over there, though? Dryden. It's Dryden, Dryden Way. The Dryden. circle, Dryden. the circle is is Dryden, Dryden. Way, mm -hmm. and it and it, the roundabout is uh, Johnson Road, which if you continue over west, is parallel to Route Ten. If you continue west all the way, it connects to 202. Mm -hmm. So everybody that wants to get either to this property or Delta Dental or the Octagon building on the corner of 202 and, and 10, if, if they're coming from 287 or someplace mm -hmm. east on Route 10, they can now bypass that figure eight, the Route 202 About and Route 202, 10. Yeah. It'll take some of that traffic off of 202 and 10. Yeah, through that blue air loose area right. that connects to the circle there. Exactly. Yeah. And okay. likewise, if you're coming from, like, <coughs> say, the Mac Cali campus, you could, I think as I understand it, you could just come south on yes. Dryden Yeah, Way. if you wanted to go south yes. on 202, th this would be almost an easier way to go. Right, yeah, you, you could avoid that's, town That's altogether. how we avoid traffic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not anymore. I know. <laughs> Secret's out. All right. Is an oxymoron, avoid traffic? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Mr. Chairman, that's basically it. Uh, Okay. This is something that you, you were uh, directed to do by the council and, and issue a report back to them, uh, and that's what's before you tonight. Okay, does anyone have any questions for uh, these two representatives on, on this proposal? Someone move, then? So move. Second, Hernandez. If I could, if I if I could, I, I think we should probably phrase the uh, phrase the motion that we find it con the, the board finds it consistent with the master plan, yeah. um, and recommends this annexation to the township council. I fully agree with Mr. Carlson. Well now done, we can sir. Say so moved. <laughs> <laughs> you got good words done. Yeah. Okay, and Hernandez still yeah, seconds that. Uh, I still second that. Okay, then call the roll. Mr. Perilak? Yes. Councilman D. Piero? Yes. Mr. Frigieri? Yes. Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Mandel? Yes. Mr. Von Aiken? Yes. Chairman Keller? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is um, just a blow up of what was in your packet before. Do you yeah, want it we, or we bring, it, bring it with me? Yeah, All right. You can take it It'll back. probably take me longer to. Market. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Have you been to the Hanover board yet? And you could use it. There. We'll be there tomorrow night. I don't even oh, have to right. take it out of there my car. <laughs> um, <laughs> Excellent. Good. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other business to come before the board? And then as you see, the next item on the agenda is time. I assume that's time of adjournment, yep. which requires a motion. <laughs> motion, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Jerry. Okay. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Cool. Next meetup. A lot of time.